All right. So today, Ren, we are talking about something that both you and I, I think, agree that can really help move the needle to help real estate agents take more listings, which is the whole point of the show. And that is the importance of tracking your numbers. And so I want to get into this conversation with you. And I think the first place that we need to start is understanding the mindset around the value of tracking your numbers. For me, it starts with one, removing the emotion from our business and treating the business like a real business. Meaning when we have the data, we can make educated business decisions without the emotion at all. And the numbers will tell us, to your point, you were saying this off air, where we're doing well and where we need to improve. Without tracking the numbers, you're running your business on emotion. And there is no room for emotion when running a business. Would you? And we'll lie to ourselves. And on the two, three days we didn't do very well, we're like, oh, well, well, good. yeah. But you know, if that's glaring at you, ouch. Exactly. And so, which what means I want daily, which means tracking daily. That's right. Daily. You got to let that. You got to let those zeros stare at you. Yeah, I mean that's the only way. It's like stepping on the scale. If someone's trying to lose weight. That's why they're so such a powerful tool because it brings, it, it removes the emotion and the weight doesn't care about your feelings. It just says, this is how much you weigh, like it or not. Here's the truth. And so that truth. Brings I think, I think you've got a new invention. Let's, but let's design a scale where you get on it. It tells you how many listings you've taken for the year. <laughs> hey, that's what I was telling you about off air. I want to build for, with you. listings taken for the month. That's it. Yeah. You just stand on that. And it says, You've only got two, you've only taken two listings in February. <laughs> you only took two listings, you know, last year, you know, we got a problem, Houston, we got a problem. So that would be cool. But um, so, so that's number one, you know, number two is I think the other part of like the mindset around the value of tracking your numbers. And we'll get into the, the meat and potatoes in just a second. You guys um, is really looking at, okay, how do you know? Like if you're running a successful business, any business for that matter, you have to be able to answer the question, how do you know? How do you know this is working? How do you know that is working? Um, where do we need more manpower? Where do I need to put more, more energy and effort? And without having data, it is virtually impossible to make business decisions. Would you agree with that, Ren? I agree. I mean, it, 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 the numbers don't lie. The, yeah, you know, the numbers don't lie. And that's that's a big reason people don't track it because they want that little lie in there. <laughs> You're right. And, and so funny, we're so on the same page because I wrote down on my notes too, people don't track because they can't handle the truth. You know, no, I know it's, it's tough. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth, you know, but That's you're right. It. People don't want to step on that scale. Look at seven days of zeros. Well, I called somebody on Thursday. Well, let me put a one there. <laughs> exactly right. So let's, why don't we, why don't we break into each category? You know, I've got seven or eight really key categories. I know you do too. And let's talk about each one. I had my coach, my coach one time, I was, I was, I'm prospecting three hours a day. He goes, all right, I want you to get a little stop, download a little stopwatch app, you know, download and, uh, and, and track it literally every time you take a break, go get coffee, whatever. First hour, 11 minutes. Oh, <sighs> That's right. You nailed it. Category one is hours prospected. And to Ren's point, you guys, if you're watching this, this is where it starts. And the thing is, Ren, is people take what seemingly uh, appears simple to not be valuable. So you just nailed it. It's like, well, I'm sitting know, at yeah. my desk. I know, but I was counting when I got a cup of coffee and I went potty and, nope, and you know, that's right. whatever, you know, it's like... Just, just because you're sitting at your desk doesn't mean you are making dials. I was, I was only, so only missing 49 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I recommend, Ren, is that agents really sit down at their desk and all the studies show that really humans can stay focused for about 45 minutes and they start to lose it. So if we do 45 minute call blocks followed by a 10 or 15 minute break, but yeah. the 45 minutes, the 45 minutes, you know, we have to go all out, focus, nothing but dial for 45 minutes. 
two or three of those a day. You, you said nothing but dial. Are you talking about butt <laughs> dialing now? Honestly. I know, right? But I like what you're saying. 45, 15, 45, 15, 45, you're done. That's right. Yeah, so you can go two hours and 45 minutes and you're done. 45, 15, 45, 15, 45. And you are, I mean, that's wonderful. And you're checking it off, right? And so, you know, when you I get mean, that's the- so doable. And yeah. I mean, and, and, and it will build you to be the, one of the wealthiest people in town. That's right. So I mean, and, and that's not an embellishment. No, not at all. Um, so that's category one. Like how long are you actually prospecting? And you'll see how this comes to fruition and why we need to know this data, why you need to know this data here in just a second. Category two is in that period of time, how many actual conversations are you having with prospects, right? And no, we're not talking necessarily. You know what? I do want your definition, Ren, of a contact. Well, here's the thing. So a conversation, a lot of people won't count certain conversations because the people go, I'm not interested and hang up. But they should count that as a conversation because the reason the person said that is because their approach was so awful. I mean, they need, those were good. They just ruined them. That's all. Yeah. They didn't mirror and match. They didn't pace and lead. They didn't weren't, they weren't sounding like the other person. That person's going, hello. And they're going, hello. Yeah. You know, and then the person's like, ah, I'm not you know, interested. Bye. Don't right, ever call exactly, me again. Exactly. Yeah. So it's an inside job. So I think you have to count those because you blew them up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so if you're calling the right sources, which were, that's category three in just a second. Yeah. yeah I, I would agree with you. It's a conversation with the right homeowner, right? If it's a wrong number, you can debate that one way or the other, but really that needs to go into the ratios to your point, Ren, because we're taking all of those into consideration yeah. to look at the first ratio contact ratio. And what we're looking at between category one, in category two, we're going super spe sales uh, training specific here. What is your contact ratio? What I recommend if you are on the Vulcan 7 dialer with Vulcan 7 data, you should be able to have between eight and 12 conversations per hour. That is what we see. Ren, is that what you're seeing on your side? Yes. And of course, it'll be by category too, you know, because there are certain categories that'll be that number will go higher. Certain categories that'll be lower. You know, if it's 1030 in the morning and it's expired, they're all running for cover. They might answer a little less. So that's just normal. So, uh, but if you look at the big spectrum, yeah, I think you can work with those numbers very well. Yeah. Well, and before we move on, I want to give people context on the importance of why. Okay. Because I, I promised them that we would give them the why. The reason we look at this first ratio, when I'm coaching an agent, the reason why I look at this ratio, this tells me about their focus and their discipline. So you said it just two minutes ago, Brandon, I'm prospecting three hours a day. I'm only having six contacts. Well, let's play the stopwatch game. Let, let, why don't you come to my office and I'll give you some time every time you start making outbound dials on Vulcan 7 and we'll see how focused you are for your three call blocks. And what we find, Ren, every single time is that when somebody's watching, their prospecting time goes up, but when they're by themselves, you nailed it. That 45 minute block, they were only dialing for 16 minutes. I always like the, the idea of, because you're absolutely right, if, there's, if they're being watched, the show off factor. So one of the things you do, if you have a good business going, is invite people to watch you. That's because right. Because the show off factor, you'll do so much more. I always said, if I came to your office uh, for a week and sat in the corner and for every hour of powerful, consistent prospecting, uh, at the end of that, I would hand you $300 in cash. How many hours would you do? Well, I do five hours a day. Great. Yeah. Okay. Now here's the deal. I get all your commission checks. I will make money on you. That's right. I know it. I say the same thing. It's so funny. So that's ratio number one. And just to recap, okay, we have category one, which is hours prospected, category two, how many conversations you had, which gives you your first conversion ratio, which is contacts per hour. Let's go now to category three, which is sources of business. And that tells Ren and I, okay, which sources of business are you having success in and versus not? This will tell you where to double down your efforts. So if you're calling, just an example, if you're calling new expireds, old expireds, 
for sale by owners, for rent by owners and absentee owners, those are your five lead pillars. You need to look at, okay, how much of my prospecting yields the most amount of conversations by category? Where are my appointments coming from? Where are my listings taken coming from? Where's my commission earned coming from by category? And that is critical because once you have the data, you said it right off air, you might find, well, I suck at FISBOs and I'm really good with for rent by owners. Okay, cool. Well, maybe you prioritize that now moving forward, but you can't do that unless you have the data. Ren, you want to add anything to that? I think that's a perfect answer. And the, you know, the data doesn't lie. Now, of course, you know, if you're newer in a category, you're going to want to, you know, work in and just say, you know, see if you can improve a little bit. But yeah, what you don't want to do is overcall a category, overcall right. a category when you could be using that for a much more effective, another category where you're getting more ROI. So you want to study that stuff and make some good decisions. Exactly right. Let's talk about category number four. And this to me, Ren, you know, as a sales coach, as a salesperson, is one of the most important KPIs in, our, in a salesperson's business. And this is their contact to appointment set ratio. So category four is the number of appointments set. And so this tells me, as your sales coach, how good you are at selling over the telephone. I will tell you, Ren, now coaching agents for the last five years, and I, I know you've been coaching for a couple of decades, this is where agents need the most work. And so, you know, we can see, we can take an agent from when they first start taking them a hundred contacts to set one listing appointment. We can get that all the way down to 15, 16, 18 through skills working just as hard. We're not working any harder. We're just increasing skill set. And by doing that year over year over year, we want to bring that ratio as, as low as we possibly can. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's a definition of insanity. You know, if they're saying stupid stuff and you can correct that and get them saying some things that really match up nicely with what the, 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 the um, prospect, uh, you know, would love to hear and be interested in, then, then yeah, that, that would be great. 18, 18 to an appointment would be huge. You know, like who they should call, what they should say, how they should approach it and everything else. If you've got a recipe that's working, yeah, I mean, that, that's huge. Yeah, and you guys that are watching this show on the replay on YouTube, I, I have everything Ren and I mentioned, there's links in the description. So you can get started with Vulcan 7. You can download my script book so you know exactly what to say to each lead source so that this uh, uh, contact to appointment set ratio is as efficient as possible. Okay, let's keep moving forward. Category number five is the number of appointments kept. So we've got appointments set. Now, how many of those appointments do you set? Do you actually keep and go on? So appointment kept ratio tells me, okay, how good are you at setting expectations when you do set a listing appointment? Are people canceling on you most of the time? So there's a lot of things we can do there, Ren, when we're coaching an agent to help them keep more of the appointments that they do set. That's probably yeah, a future if episode. Yeah, they're keeping because sometimes, you know, it's a two-way street. You may want exactly. to- drop them off too. So yeah, so that's going to be a, right. There's the ones, the number, uh, the, and they're always, so you always have to have both those numbers because there are going to be somewhere you're like, I'm not going on that. That's right. That's right. You might cancel, they might cancel, but we have to look <laughs> yeah, at that subsequent ratio. Subsequent conversation, you realize, you know, you, you run some numbers and they want a hundred, hundred thousand more for that house than, yeah. than, 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 than is possible. And they owe that much. <laughs> exactly right. So, but I'll tell you the bigger problem I'm seeing in the market right now is agents setting appointments and then getting canceled on, you know, a lot. Oh, oh, oh. So that'll be a future episode yeah. on what we can do to help that ratio uh, uh, stay solid. So, so yeah, the next yeah, category, it's, it's competitive out there. Yep. Yeah, it's competitive. And, you know, you get to a point as a salesperson where you're good at getting like forcing that appointment, forcing right, the right. yes. They're, they're, they're dying to see you. A lot of times they know they want to list with you before you go, if you get that good or, yeah. and with, you know, for sale owners is the most common, but there's a, there That's are right. several, there are several strategies with those FISBOs because FISBOs want to, oh, I just want to try it one more week. You know, That's right. That kind of stuff. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that leads us to category number six, which is contracts signed. This is your batting average. This is your closing ratio. 
So of the appointments you go on, how many do you walk away with with a signed contract? Now, this is the next major KPI, Ren, that I look at as a coach. This tells me we go back to skills. So if you're going on 10 listing presentations and you're only getting four or five, we got a massive problem. We've got to get your listing presentation on camera. We've got to break down the game film and we have to understand where are you falling short? Why is your conversion so low? That, yeah, that, that presentation. So uh, are they recording? How are they recording those? Are they doing live or just simulations? No, simulations uh, before and after. So if their ratios are really low, I'll have them put a listing presentation on camera. And that's I the mean, thing. That, that, that you, can, you can grow years in a matter of two or three of those because you, you don't know what you don't. I mean, you watch yourself. A lot of times you're shocked. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, big time. And that's what I would recommend for, for everybody watching this. If you want to get you, if you want to become a great presenter, as uncomfortable as it is, put yourself on camera and then go watch it with your peers. You will cringe and then you'll understand why no sellers are signing contracts, right? You'll see exactly what you need to improve in order to be more compelling at a listing presentation. And so that's something I highly, highly recommend. I do too. I can, I, can, I mean, I, that is the, the, the differences you can make are dramatic. Yeah. If you've never re list, uh, recorded yourself uh, doing a presentation, even, you know, you, in your office, I mean, you should just do it once a month. Yeah, absolutely. That is exactly what I recommend. Oh, once do you? a month. Wow. Okay, good. Yeah. Maybe, once maybe a month. Because, I mean, you can take it to the bank. Exactly. It's not a waste of time. Oh my gosh. It's probably the best time you can spend. I know you're going to 12 be recordings. You know, you'll pick up an extra 50 grand, then another extra oh. 50 grand, then another extra 50 grand. And like, you know, I didn't, you know, I don't know what I didn't know. It's one of those kind of things. Well, I'm making, I make the argument that I don't know if there's anything more important than dialing in your listing presentation, because here's the thing that's debatable. How an agent gets to a listing appointment is absolutely debatable whether it was a past client, center of influence, referral, expire, FISBO, debate that all day long. But here's what you cannot debate. Regardless of how you got there, it's going to take absolute skills to compel the client or the, the prospect to sign a contract. And so there's nothing more important than dialing in your listing consultation presentation. I love it. Perfect. So let's, let's keep rocking and rolling. Category, yes. category number seven. So we just talked about category six, which is contract signed. Now we've got to look at of the contracts you get signed, how many are actually selling? This is your list to close ratio. Right. So when you get a contract signed, are you pricing them all wrong? Are they canceling on you? Are they withdrawing the listing? Are you not selling your listing? This is another area from a coaching perspective, Ren, that we dig into very deep to make sure you're setting expectations, you're taking the right listings, you're updating your sellers, you're getting reductions because it, otherwise you're just spinning your wheels, wasting your time, energy, money, and uh, 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 energy. Right. And with that one, you can run your math and say, for every contact I make, I make $117. That'll get you making more contacts. Oh, big time, big time. Well, well actually, yeah, that's actually category number eight I had was commissioned earned. So we have oh, number of homes gotcha, sold. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah, exactly. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, because so, once you once you know that how many contacts to a certain dollar amount, then you can take all those, run the averages, and you come out with that that number. Then you're like, I need to make ten more. I should make ten more contacts now. How much money will I lose if I don't? Oh, a lot. <laughs> you nailed it. I mean, category eight is dollars or uh, commission earned, which you can take commissions earned divided by the total number of contacts you make over the course of a year and do exactly what Ren just said, which is get your dollar per contact. When a realtor can understand this number, their entire outlook on their business changes forever, forever. Because now they don't look at someone hanging up on them as rejection. They say, I just made $117. Thank you very much. Next, next, next. Next, they understand what the contacts mean because without knowing the numbers, you just making dials, you're getting lost, you got contact itis, it doesn't mean anything. When you could put a dollar amount behind the work that you put forward, your effort goes up, the meaning of the work increases. And I think that's what we see top producers uh, do every day.
Perfect. I know. I love that. I love that number. I always have. I know it. It's great. And we show this in our, and so that's the other thing I want to leave this, this audience today is we show that in the reverse selling app. So all of you can go to the app store and you guys can download our coaching app for free and it will show you and it'll break down all these ratios for you, every single one. And it's totally free. So go grab it. It's reverse selling on the app store, Android or Apple. Yeah. You know, it's kind of fun because these, you know, you can apply this system that you have anywhere you can that's you can right move to uh, la jolla or del mar and, and and make triple your income or you can just move to the side of uh, work luxury in your town and do it i mean it, it it doesn't matter it's the same scripts it's the same approach whether you're no matter what price range you're working you want to you want to get a raise just go work the higher market exactly nobody so else is, nobody else is it's it, it, i think it's funny that way well i wouldn't call a two million dollar house why yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't know what to say. Yeah. But it's the same words. Actually, they're friendlier, believe it or not. That's exactly right. That might be in future episode two, talking about there getting you into go. luxury. There so you go. last thing I have for the show today, Ren, is how do you feel about your Bengals making it to the Super Bowl? Is that your team? Uh, uh, hell yeah. Okay, I was going to say, it better be. Uh, I, I, in fact, uh, if, if we're going to go there, uh, stand by. Please. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Whoops. Whoop. There we go. Right here. Let me do it. There we go. There uh, we go. That's there amazing. Go. I love there it. There we go. I, you've got to be so fired up for Cincinnati. I mean, that we city's are. got to just we, be on we fire. Are, we are. We are. We're very excited. <laughs> that's it's cool. It's going to be man. a lot of fun. I mean, the last two weekends of football, I don't care oh. which game you watched, every game was oh. amazing. Amazing. Wasn't it? I just, I got to tell you, that's one area that we disagree. I have to root for Stafford. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, I had to pay the price. He was on Detroit losing year after year after year after year. I'm so happy for the guy to make I it. Get to the it. Super Bowl. I get so it. I get it. So that's, that's the number nine that I'm, I'm rooting for. Yeah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So anyway, Ren, a lot of fun today. Uh, hopefully you guys got a lot of value from today's episode. If there are things you want Ren and I to cover in future episodes, like I say, every time, Use the comments section beneath this video and Ren and I will happily discuss that in great detail. So Ren, have an amazing week. Thank you for you all too, your support. Brandon. Appreciate Alrighty. it. Track your numbers. Tell everybody your numbers. That's right. It's a form of accountability. You got it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Thanks Ren. Thanks, everybody.